No, I'm okay. All right, good. You're giving me the thumbs up. It's because I have no monitor, so I don't know what I sound like out there, but it just sounds loud. And I hear feedback, but it's just probably me. Okay, so why would God do that? Why would he commit himself to the task of helping the lonely? Why? Well, we understand in Genesis 2.8, you may know this, because this is a verse that we read a lot in marriage. And when I'm getting, getting ready to marry a couple, I usually use this verse. What does it say? Then the Lord God planted a garden of union in the east, and there he placed the man, he made man. But when you continue to read the rest of the second part of verse 8, it's not up there, and I don't have it for you right now. What, what, what did God say? What did clearly say? He says, it is not good for man to what? To be alone. You've heard that scripture over and over and over again. And so when we say that verse, we think, oh, he's talking about marriage. But when you really begin to study the, the book of Genesis and what happened to Adam next, he didn't give him a wife right away. What did he give him next? Anybody? Animals. You remember that? He gave him, he gave him that uh, ability to do that. And, and, and I'll get to that part as well. But I want you to understand one thing about loneliness. Loneliness is not an attitude. Loneliness is not an attitude. Somebody that just walks around and they are isolated or they are to themselves or they just want to know. No, loneliness is a spirit. It is a spirit that you don't have to have no friends to be lonely. Anybody? In fact, you can be the most popular person in school youth and be lonely. You can be married to a great gal, a great guy, and be lonely. You can have great family and at times be lonely. And so, there's something to be said there because if you are a Christian, and even if you're not, you will come into a point in your life where you may feel lonely. In fact, lonely doesn't mean that you're being punished for your sins. It doesn't mean that you have no faith. Uh, it, it, it's not a religious thing. It's not necessarily that God is testing you or trying you, but it's because you've experienced something, maybe in your past, maybe you're going through something in the present, and it's causing you to feel lonely. Sometimes when you have so many people around you and you're going through something, but they don't understand what you're going through, you feel lonely. And so you're striving to make that connection with somebody that can understand your feeling. And then I can go on from there and then it becomes a domino effect. Loneliness leads into depression and depression leads into stress and anxiety. And it's been all the other stuff that we preached about. It's been all that we preached about. And you said, okay, Pastor, but that's great and dandy, but, you know, really, who, did, did, did people in the Bible suffer loneliness? You would be amazed at the people who were men of God, who were faithful, who were anointed, who were obedient, who were kings, who were rulers, prophets that suffered this spirit. In fact, just to name a few, Jacob, Moses, uh, Job, Nehemiah, Elijah, and Jeremiah, you said, yeah, but, but, but show me with scripture. Well, let me give to you with David. Let's talk with David for the one that helped write Psalms, the largest book in the Bible. Look what he says in Psalm 25, 16. Uh, it, it's very clear. Turn to me and have mercy for I am alone and in deep distress. This is David, a man after God's own heart. Yes or no? This is a man who, yes, we know he had his slip-ups, but man, he was a great king. He took down the lion. In many stories, and I can give you all these things for him to be able to pep himself up, but what? He finds himself in distress. He is lonely, and the Bible says that very clearly in another version that says, Lord, don't turn your back. I'm calling on you. I need you. Have you ever felt like that at work where you're going through something so bad you can't tell your wife, you can't tell your husband because they don't understand, you can't tell your boss or your friend that they'll make fun of you, you can't tell this person or that person because they'll lead you astray, and you're like, well, shoot, who do I talk to? Loneliness. We all experience, that's David, how about Paul? Paul, who was Saul, the Christian, uh, the Christian killer, but then became one of the most powerful men of God, 2 Timothy 4, 9 and 11, watch what it says here. It says, Timothy, please come, he says, as soon as you can. He's telling Timothy, please come as soon as you can, verse 10. It says, D D uh, Demas has deserted me because he loves the thing of this life and has gone to Thessalonica. And it says, Christians, if you keep reading, it says, has gone to Galatia. Titus has gone to Dalmatia. And then verse 11, only Luke is with me. 
Bring Mark with you when you come, for he will be helpful to me in my ministry. This is Paul talking, and he's saying, this person went here, he felt abandoned, and this person went with his mom, and this one went to college, and this one went astray, and, and now I only got Luke with me. And he's got somebody with him, and then he's even got, it says that he's got, he's got Luke with him, and he says, and if, while you're at it, bring Mark. Is it where two or more? I mean, shouldn't Paul have known this? So what does that teach us, church? That we're going to find ourselves in a lonely spot sometimes. In fact, I'll go deeper out to say, in our position in ministry, ministry is a very, very lonely place. Ministry is a very lonely place. You want to know how many people I can talk to? Who can understand what I'm dealing with? How many people I can actually go to them and say, hey, say, hey man, I need to talk to you. But they, they won't look at me as Pastor Pepper, but they look at me as human Pepper. You want to know how many people I have to? I don't have many. I, if I have one or two, but I wish I could pour my spirit out to my heart to say, man, can I tell you something and you're not going to judge me or see me different on the pulpit? Okay. Loneliness. It affects us all. You say, yeah, but Jesus is king and he never suffered. Oh, really? Even Jesus, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, suffered loneliness. Prove it to me, pastor. I will. Matthew 27, 46. He's at his most desperate point in his life. It's three o'clock in the afternoon and Jesus caught off with a loud voice. Eli, Eli. Lama Sabatini, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Jesus, the one we seek refuge in, found himself in a lonely time. So before you get religious on me and say, Pastor, that's not me, be careful of that spirit. Because that's a spirit of pride, and that might be even worse than a spirit of loneliness. <laughs> 